what we have what we have established in this country down through the through the years since de Tocqueville began writing about it is this tremendous sense of the sort of frontier individualism. What seems to matter most about the American is that he is an individual by God and just off by himself and and the frontier is out there and and I'm me. Uh, it's the Lone Ranger, it's the Hermit, it's the Mountain Man, it's, it's whatever it is that defines that kind of experience. Um, a lot of that accounts for the terrific capacity for American entrepreneurship, inventiveness, uh, literary skill, and all of that, that kind of stuff. What we miss by that is the fact that we're humans, we're people, and we're made for each other. There is a sense in which society matters because we're... we're we're part of it and we need to participate in it. It's not going to work all by itself. And what happened in my generation, it seems, again and again, is people coming up to that realization and then just sort of something turning off and off they drift off into sort of separate orbits, flying around as kind of, kind of unattached uh, asteroids out there. Um, there needs to be, it seems to me, if society is going to hold together, that sense of social cohesion in which each of us, as part of the community, says, I've, I've got a responsibility to this. It's not a formal responsibility. It's not law. It's just that, that I care about this society, and I'm, I'm part of this. Do you think this will happen to our generation, your generation? I don't know. I don't think, from, I, and I, I guess I used to think that, that maybe it would. I, I guess I'm increasingly concerned that whatever the gravity is that holds the asteroid in orbit is just beginning to dissolve. And these people again and again are just sort of out there, out there wandering. Tremendous creativity and tremendous talent in those people. But if it's not somehow brought to bear within a social context, I don't know what's going to be the, what's going to be the, it, it will not result, I don't think, as, to, to answer your question, in the kind of leadership positions uh, being assumed by that, that decade of people in this, in this cohort of the population. I think of myself as just at the beginning of this. I'm at the very beginning of the baby boom, and I'm at the very beginning of this, this thing in the 60s. Not quite in it, because I graduated in 65. Had I graduated in 67, I would be in the, in the heart of it. And that just leads to one other thing which I think you've got to pay attention to, and that is the fact that the baby boom phenomenon is a vital one. This notion I remember hearing a demographer talk about that and saying, I was born in 1931 and almost nobody else was. I'd walk into rooms looking for jobs and say, you want to work? Guy, come on in, work. Well, I was born in 1944. And from then on, for the next 10 years, just about everybody was. So you walk into a room looking for a job and they say, well, there's 400 people ahead of you. How good are you? Are you really the best of the 400? Prove it. Be the kind of individual that stands out above all these others. So. Obviously, what that produces is a tremendous pressure to be the individual and not to be part of the social cohesion. Well, the demographers tell me, and I think they're right, we never ever in the history of the world experienced anything like the baby boom that followed World War II, and we will never experience it again. This was that sort of one-time phenomenon. And what we see in the 60s may be as, as simply explained as saying that's the maturing of that tremendous crush of population, which finally didn't have the elbow room, and finally needed to break out and say, I'm me, in ways that no generation of Americans had ever had to do before.